If your house is in perfect order, your days well planned, and you stick to the plan, this program may not be for you. But if you never have enough time to get it all done, then you'll want to listen to this edition of Excellent Living. It's part two of Cheryl Martin's conversation with certified family life educator Nancy Van Pelt. Nancy has conducted hundreds of seminars around the world and written more than 40 books, including today's topic, Get Organized, Seven Secrets to Sanity for Stressed Women. If you missed the last broadcast, I encourage you to order the CD that includes both programs. Just go to excellentliving.org and click on Resources. We'll pick up today with Nancy telling Cheryl about the five-minute miracle for putting your house in order. For most of us, it would only take 20 minutes out of any given day to bring that home under control. And that's five minutes in the bathroom after your shower. What are you doing? After you get your makeup on, you are shoving it in a drawer if necessary. You're putting it away. You're hanging up your towel. You're wiping up any little uh, makeup stuff that's hair in the sink and so forth. You keep those little um, pull-out things to um, you pick up that stuff So and you straighten the rug so that when you leave the bathroom in five minutes, that bathroom looks good. Now, we're not talking about clean. Mm-hmm. We're talking about... It's manageable. Out- right. It's because We can stand to go in there because it looks clean. Anything looks clean if it is uncluttered. If it's cluttered, nothing looks clean. It might be that you... Uh, just vacuum the floor. But if you've got shoes dumped all over it, newspapers, coffee cups, and all of this all over the floor, it doesn't look clean, mm-hmm. even though you just vacuumed. All right, so in your bed, in, the, in your bedroom, in the morning, uh, take five minutes, hang up any clothes, put the shoes in the closet, uh, make your bed, uh, pick up the newspaper, any coffee cups, any just five minutes. You are teaching the children to do the same thing. Now, how long does it teach children to do these kinds of things? Children are little. They have short remembers. It's going to take a little longer time. But in the morning before they come out for breakfast, you check their bathroom if they have their own. And you see if they have remembered to hang up their towels and put things away and make their beds. And then they have their breakfast. When they are through with their breakfast, they put the milk away in the refrigerator. They don't even have to get their dishes all the way into the dishwasher, but they get them in the sink and they get them rinsed. If you have picked up the night before in the living room and family room, you are ready now to leave the house, and when you come home, your home can smile at you and offer you that rest and serenity that you need. So you're saying the five-minute miracle is whatever room you've been in, before you leave it, take five minutes to tidy it up. Exactly. And it makes a world of difference when a woman comes home from work and faces another job after the one that she just left. She's got a clean working surface to start with. She can almost breathe a sigh of relief. Her bed is made, straightened, you know, maybe wash is underway. When it comes to wash way, a, a wash day, a woman that works outside of the home can start a load of wash, maybe even get that load into the dryer and another load started before she ever goes to, to work. And then maybe one of the jobs for the children is to take that load out, start be, uh, folding that, and get the other one. So, so, you know, wash is not something you can just stand there and watch over every minute. But there are ways of getting these things done in a timely manner. You're saying, in essence, the problem is not not having enough time, but wisely using the time that but we have. But wisely using the time that you have. And this is why, you know, if I look for, uh, especially women who are teachable, if a woman does not have an open mind, I can't teach her anything. But if she is open to learning a new way of organizing the time that she already has, there are ways of living in this stress life that we have. There are ways of doing it better. How should you handle it? We have the cell phones. We have uh, camera phones. We have all kinds of ways of people, you know, talking on the phone in the car. Just a lot of things that could easily be time wasters. What do you see as some of the major time wasters of today? And how can we make sure we don't succumb to them? 
Well, I think um, our social networking, Facebook, and some of these are some of the biggest time wasters. These things are very addictive in nature, and I know uh, women who are neglecting their children and their husbands because of the social networking. Um, I was watching, I think it was a program of Dr. Phil the other day, where uh, this woman was so busy social networking on Facebook that she was neglecting her husband, and her husband was very angry over it. This marriage was headed for divorce, and this expert comes in and takes every uh, piece of technology that they have, cell phones and computers and everything, away for 48 hours, I think it was, something like that. And um, there are other people that advocate this. Um, Emails. Nothing, yeah, yeah. Nothing bothers me more than to go to church and hear cell phones ringing. Wait a minute. I don't think that's God calling us. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, can't we not remember to turn that thing off or on silent, at least? What is so important during the church service that we can't even turn our cell phones off for one hour? So how do we manage these modes of communication, what do you recommend? Emails, uh, cell phone calls, calls coming into the home, everyone wanting attention right then and there. Any suggestions for managing that well in social media? Well, one thing that, uh, well, of course, I believe that um, the television is off during meal times, never on, and all cell phones are turned off. But that's not just the children's cell phones. That means mom and dad have to obey by the same rules. And um, that cell phones come on, uh, are laid on your bed at night at 9 or 10 o'clock. Otherwise, what parents don't understand is that these kids can be up texting and doing whatever until 1 o'clock in the morning, and they are sleep deprived. You talk to any teacher. Um, in the school system, and you'll find out that these kids are falling asleep in class. They are really sleep-deprived. They cannot do their best work in school when they are sleep-deprived. Our brains need total rest. And, um, you know, it's fine for a family to watch a television program or two, but not to allow it to dominate our lives. Um, Computers, now, I happen to be a writer, so... You know, I'm at my computer all day, but most people are not at, uh, well, maybe most people Now, are you tempted, do you have certain periods of the day that you will look at email, or do you constantly look at them when they come in? Um, I I tend more to look at them when they come in because I hear that little beep. Okay. Unless I'm really focusing and writing something that's critical, maybe I need to get that paragraph out or finish that page or whatever, Nothing to me is that important. And on the Sabbath day, I do not open my computer. There, I need rest from a computer one day a week <laughs> as well. So, I like what you said. You said, I have a tremendous capacity for getting things done only because my home and life are organized. That's right. That's right. I could never... I, people, uh, you know, I've written uh, 42 books, I think it is now. All right, how do you get that many books written? You have to be an organized person. Um, these books do not come easy by me because I, I'm not writing storybooks. Not that sto- writing storybooks are easy, but that's more inspirational writing. My writing is more research-based. So... Uh, Often it takes me two years to put together a really well-researched book. I just finished writing a book. um, It's going to be called The Smart Parent. Mm. And um, so the the research that I did, what goes into good fathering, what goes into good mothering, you know, discipline, communication, what is new out there? So I tell you, um, I, I really researched this this stuff out, and it takes me a, a long time to do it. And then I'm, I'm traveling. I try not to book my seminars. I, I only do like two uh, a month over the weekend. These will be weekend seminars where I'm traveling someplace. But then what happens to me is 
some local group will say, Nancy, can you come and, and do a one-time thing? And so you get all these extra things going. So when you plan six months in advance, a year in advance, it looks like you've got loads of time. But when you get there, it is very rushed. The only thing now is most of my seminars are developed. I use PowerPoint, and so I, I don't, I'm not starting from scratch all over again with you, each seminar. You just brought up something, Nancy. You mentioned you have a plan, and someone will call up and say, can you do this? What is your philosophy? I think a lot of people will say they start out the day, and they have a plan, and then they get all these interruptions, and the next thing you know, they look, and they had everything written. It totally got changed. Somebody asked them to do something. Somebody called. They had a conversation that went longer than they expected. I mean, how rigid should we be with our plans? Well, I, you know, rigid people aren't very much fun. And okay. I'm high sanguine. I need fun in my life. Now, I have my plan for the day, but if somebody calls and say, hey, Nancy, let, there's a sale on someplace, guess where I'm going? My <laughs> plan can be put off until tomorrow. Um, and they find that the most unorganized people are women who are at home all day. Why? Because after they get the children out the door, then they sit down for a cup of coffee or whatever, turn on the TV, and they get lost in a morning show of some kind, and uh, pretty soon it's 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, and they don't have their tasks done. What I say to this woman is you do your tasks first. This is what we try to teach our children, work before play. Mm -hmm. See, we're following a principle here, work before play. That was best-selling author Nancy Van Pelt on the topic, Get Organized. You are listening to Excellent Living with Cheryl Martin. You can find out more about this program when you visit excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org. Cheryl's guest today, Nancy Van Pelt, is a certified family life educator based in Fresno, California. Let's return to the conversation. Here's Cheryl. What role does prayer play in this as we are looking at our plans and the desire to be more organized? Oh, what an interesting question, because one of the books that I wrote was a book called My Prayer Notebook, and I teach seminars on personal devotions. And, you know, whatever we do first in the morning is going to get done. After that, anything can interrupt it. So the first thing that I do when I roll out of bed in the morning, and I, of course, have my own office in my home, and all my study materials are right here. They're right in front of me right now as we're talking. And this is my prayer time. This is my reading time. This is the time that I devote to the Lord. My day is laid before the Lord first thing in the morning. Now, you don't have to have devotions first thing in the morning. You can have devotions uh, morning, noon, or night and get benefit from it. You can do the same with exercise. You can exercise morning, noon, or night and get benefits from it. The difference is people who exercise in the morning are the ones that stay with an mm. exercise program. Aha. Mm. And I believe it's the same way with devotions. If you say, oh, you know, I'm going to have devotions after my day is complete. I'm going to crawl in bed, and that's going to be my time with the Lord, and I'm going to read my Bible at that time. Well, what happens when you leave that till the last thing of the day? You're so tired, you will probably fall asleep with your Bible in your lap. Mm. So I believe that... Uh, prayer and devotions need to be done uh, first thing in the morning. That way you can lay your plans before the Lord and ask for his blessing on whatever you do throughout that day. And also, that person can also be very honest with the Lord about where they are and where they want to be and yes. even acknowledge, Lord, I know that I've let my house go. I have not... Uh, discipline the children to yes. get them to help, can really cry out to the Lord about these issues. Yes, and I believe the Lord is there to strengthen us. And um, as I mentioned, some of these things that we're talking about are more of a challenge for some women than they are for others. 
Some women may never have their homes as organized as I have mine. But that does not mean that you cannot have, um, you know, some organization uh, in your life. It's uh, Phyllis Diller who said that um, she had trouble getting up and getting dressed in the morning, and sometimes it would be 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and then the doorbell would ring, and she's still in her pajamas. So she kept um, get well cards in a drawer <laughs> right by the, and then she'd run for that drawer and set up get well cards all over the house, and she would go to the door weekly and say, oh, I've been so terribly sick. We don't want to have to use excuses like that for uh, not getting our lives together. I believe that any woman, uh, when she uh, gains a little bit of discipline, can uh, do this. And um, that's why I, I have separated out now one of the seven principles, uh, one of the seven secrets for sanity called sort through the clutter. And in fact, I taught that uh, last weekend. And um, these women were just so gung-ho to go home and uh, do that. Why? Because they had the tools in their hands. They knew what they were going to do. They knew where they were going to begin, what room they were going to begin in. They knew what they needed to have with them. They knew they were going to clear the uh, visible clutter first. They knew that they were going after the hidden clutter next. They know exactly how to do it. They're going to carry post-it notes and a pen with them in a pocket. And when they see that um, they're missing something, if they're working in the dining room, for example, you know what candles you need to go with your dishes. You can be, oh, I forgot to mention to you that a companion book that I wrote to uh, get organized is a book called Creative Hospitality. Well, we, why are not people as hospitable today as they used to be? Well, because women are too stressed to be able to get the cooking and the cleaning done. So I say you have to get your home organized. Otherwise, you, you don't want anybody coming in and seeing the mess. Once you get your home organized and your time organized, you will be more able then to do the hospitality that I believe is uh, so important. Nancy, I'm sorry. Outside. Nancy, one of the things that I love about your book, and it's just filled with so much practical information on how to do this, but at the end of each chapter, you have an affirmation. For example, here's one. Today, I choose to put order in my life. I will ignore negative self-defeating messages from the past. I can and will begin doing things in a fitting and orderly manner, and it can be fun. Why was it important for you to put an affirmation, it looks like a card, at the end of each chapter? Because I believe so much in positive self-talk. And about 75% of what parades through our brain is negative. And if, if a woman keeps saying, I can't do this, I don't have any energy, I don't know where to begin, I'm too tired, and she's making excuses, 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 she is never going to get started on this and bring her life under control. But if she would take that affirmation and put it on a card, write it out on a card, duplicate it, and start putting this around the house and repeat this day after day, 21 to 45 days, she will find that she becomes a much more positive person, that she can get things done. She will even be a nicer wife and a better mother because the kids are, are watching mom. If mom has a negative attitude toward her housework, toward cooking, toward cleaning, guess what kind of attitude the kids are going to have? They are like little mirrors, and they're picking all this up. If she's going around, I hate to cook. I've always hated cooking. Well, this is going to rub off on any daughters that she has. So all she needs is a more positive mindset. And you're right, at the end of each one of those chapters, there is uh, an affirmation that goes along with that particular secret to sanity. For example, here's another one. Today, I choose to put order in my life. I will take charge of my time. And by so doing, I can also change my circumstances. I choose by the grace of God to have a plan 
for this day. Everything is in the affirmative, and it's also a choice, isn't it? Yes, a choice to, um, to say that, and you need to keep saying that. Uh, to reinforce the positive, undo the negative, I have um, I have this in um, my PowerPoint, and um, um, there are even studies that show that women over 30 who are saying, "Oh, I'll never get married." Well, they don't get married. Mm. Well, well, I teach them to erase that negative thought and say something positive. Someday I will get married. I am preparing myself now for that great day. In fact, I know one woman who is doing this, and she had me over to her house the other day, and she took me and she's done some redecorating and so forth. So I was going through her house, and I'm in a huge walk-in closet, and I see half of her clothes are over on one side. The other side is empty. She says, you know what that's for? The man. I said, I suppose (laughs) it's for the man in your life that God is preparing for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that might be carrying it a little bit too far, but that's how positive we can get actually preparing our lives that way if if that's in God's plan for us. You are a firm believer that God calls us to excellence, aren't you? Yes, I really am. In fact, that's the um, title of my weekend uh, seminars that I do for women. I did this last uh, weekend, A Woman of Excellence. And this is when I teach them about positive self-worth. Teach them, uh, first thing on your agenda in the morning is getting that personal devotion time. Teaching them about creative hospitality. How to sort through the clutter. All of these things are part of the Woman of Excellence weekend. Nancy, do you believe that every woman has within her the power to be excellent despite her humble beginnings, or even let's say she's near the poverty line now. She didn't go to college. Um, she's just really just trying to make ends meet. Is excellence part of her DNA as well? I, I believe she can. Her circumstances are going to be um, different than um, some movie star who lives in a mansion. But uh, getting organized does not mean you have to live in a mansion. Uh, hospitality does not mean you, you live in a mansion. We can still be organized, follow God's plan for our lives in the most humble circumstances. This is really, uh, it, it's really a fun way to live. Uh, one time I was uh, teaching over here in Los Banos, California or someplace, And uh, after the church service, a single man invited us over. He did not even have a dining room, but he was a cook. You know what? It wasn't anything that fancy, and yet you'll never know what that meal meant to us. Um, I think it was some kind of a spaghetti dish he threw together, and he had a nice salad, and we were served on on a coffee table. Another young couple from our church not long ago, invited us over. Let me tell you, this is the smallest apartment that I've ever been in. She had a long, narrow room that was a kitchen, and then another room beside that that was both their living room and their bedroom. The living room and bedroom were divided by a bookcase. There were only enough room for three people to sit. We were served on an oil cloth uh, on her uh, coffee table. But we, we were served simply, but I was so proud of her for practicing hospitality. Hmm. What she had was not uh, ostentatious at all. It was all very simple. But she used the talents that God gave her, and I believe she gained a great blessing. This has been a great time, Nancy, and your book, again, has so much more Get Organized. But just in your closing 30 seconds or so, what words of encouragement would you give that person who knows that he or she needs to get organized and just hasn't done it yet? You know, we all need that little final push in order to uh, get started. And when you look at the entire house, and if every room is cluttered and disorganized and it just looks too huge, don't look at the whole project. Think of just one room. 
what would make you feel better today if you had that one room organized? Perhaps it's the family room where the family spends most of the time. Think, what could I do in this room? And, and start one place rather than looking at the whole thing, which is just too overwhelming. Make a beginning, make it small, and do it. Because the small changes can lead to a big it makes a big difference. And do something when you're through decluttering that room. Do something in that room that will make it smile at you. It might be adding a new picture. It might be adding a green plant. It might be adding a pillow. Something to make that room smile at you. Thanks so much, Nancy Van Pelt, for sharing some extremely helpful secrets to sanity for the stressed woman. Nancy is the author of more than 40 books, including one on today's topic called Get Organized. Others include Smart Love and Train Up a Child. I encourage you to order the CD of this conversation, which includes both programs featuring Nancy's interview. Consider purchasing the CD to give as a gift to that busy wife or mother who would appreciate some tips for getting rid of clutter and becoming more organized. You can purchase the CD online when you visit excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org. Another option is to pay by check. The cost is $9. That includes shipping. And send it to Excellent Living, Post Office Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland, 20825. That's P.O. Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland, 20825. I'm Doris McMillan. Next time on Excellent Living, our relationship coach, Johnny Parker, stops by for his monthly visit. 